Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about ovarian carcinoma. An ovarian carcinoma is a malignant growth in the ovaries. It is the second most common malignant genital carcinoma of the female. The ovaries are usually around the size of an almond and they are responsible for the production of estrogen and progesterone, as well as for the maturation of an egg in each menstrual cycle. Histologically, there are several different types of ovarian carcinomas. In most cases, it is a tumor of epithelial origin. Other possibilities are tumors of germ cell origin and metastasis from other organs that have spread to the ovaries. Each of the subgroups can be further divided into different subtypes according to how aggressive they are. Unfortunately, many women are diagnosed with ovarian carcinoma at a late stage, as it often does not cause any symptoms in the beginning of the disease. The average age of diagnosis is between 60 and 70 years. The most common type causing lethality is the high-grade serous carcinoma. Risk factors for the development of ovarian carcinoma are polycystic ovarian syndrome, hormone therapy for postmenopausal women, as well as the prior use of medications that induce ovulation. Those are used for in vitro fertilization. Other risk factors are having breast cancer, as this type often spreads to the ovaries, having the BRCA mutation and being infertile. Another large risk factor is the age. Protective factors are having had several pregnancies and the long-term use of ovulation inhibiting medications, as for example oral contraceptives, or intrauterine contraceptive devices. This is due to the reduction of the total number of ovulations in a lifetime. After an egg is released and ovulation occurred, the remaining tissue usually undergoes apoptosis and new cells form in the ovary. When this process does not occur as it should, abnormal cells can form and lead to cell aggregates of mutated cells, which can develop into a carcinoma. When a woman has an early onset of menstruation or has many ovulations in her lifetime, more eggs are released, so more often a corpus luteum forms in the ovary, which will have to be replaced with new cells. Whenever new cells have to be made, errors can occur in the cell formation and division, which leads to cancer formation. In the next point, I would like to talk about the symptoms. As I said earlier, most patients do not experience symptoms for a large extent of the disease. If symptoms occur, they are usually unspecific and can include ascites, a feeling of fullness, loss of appetite, together with weight loss, fatigue, and gastrointestinal disturbances. These unspecific symptoms are the major cause of ovarian carcinomas being frequently diagnosed at a late stage. To diagnose ovarian carcinoma, it is recommended to undergo ultrasound examinations and palpations of the abdomen regularly. This, however, cannot find small tumors. For smaller tumors, it is possible to do a transvaginal sonography or also a CT scan or MRI. The confirmation of a diagnosis is done via a laparoscopic examination, in which a tumor is removed and examined further after its complete removal. Also, certain tumor markers can be elevated However, they are not specific for the ovarian carcinoma. Those are usually not used for primary establishment of a diagnosis, but rather for the control of therapy 
and possibility of a relapse. Ovarian cancers are usually treated by surgery. In the surgery, it is attempted to remove the entire tumor as a whole, to not iatrogenically cause metastasis. Other ways for the tumor to cause metastasis is via direct invasion of other organs in the peritoneum and abdominal cavity. Most often, the diaphragm is involved. Via the lymphatics, metastasis can occur by different routes. A hematogenous spread is rather rare. The staging of ovarian carcinomas is done by the TNM classification. A stage 1 carcinoma is confined to the ovaries. A stage 2 carcinoma usually invades organs in the pelvis. A stage 3 carcinoma invades organs outside the pelvis or metastasis via the lymphatic system. A stage 4 carcinoma includes the occurrence of distant metastasis. The prognosis depends on the stage as well as the age and general health status of the patient. Another important factor is if in the surgical removal of the tumor, the entire tumor is resected or if parts are left in the ovary. In the last part, I want to quickly recap the normal function of the ovary. In the ovaries, there are thousands of oocytes that a girl is already born with. After the onset of the first menstruation, called menarche, in, an early, in each menstrual cycle, one egg will mature and is released from the ovaries. In their development, they start off as a primordial follicle. After that, they become primary follicles. By the influence of the follicular stimulating hormone, they will develop into the secondary follicle, which is composed of granular cells and surrounded by tica cells. Around the oocyte is a layer or wall we call zona pellucida. The granular and tecal cells together produce the hormone estrogen, which signalizes the uterus to prepare the uterine lining. When a mature follicle, also called graphene follicle, is formed, the luteinizing hormone increases and weakens the wall of the ovary. That results in the oocyte being released. The granular and tica cells remain in the ovary and form what we call corpus luteum which by luteinizing hormone stimulation produces progesterone. For around 10 days, the corpus luteum produces progesterone to prepare the endometrial lining for implantation. If after around 10 days, there is no implantation, the corpus luteum stops producing progesterone and it starts degenerating. With progesterone levels declining, the endometrial lining will slug off. This happens around day 1 to 5 of the menstrual cycle. The corpus luteum will eventually become the corpus albicans and form a scar tissue inside the ovary. After that, the cycle of egg maturation begins all over again. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much.